I tried to change my tone. I went for a little bit more of a strange sort of like strong tone instead of like my usual loud tone to see if this microphone will eventually pick it up. Welcome to Stoppage Time with IPJ and the Bucket Man, John Imer. Buckets, did you hear any of that? Did it pick up a single decibel of it? I thought you were doing some kind of like trick. Yeah, some mind games where you're pretending to yell, but no, did it pick up a single ounce of that, Ian? For everybody watching out there on the YouTube platform, and that was just for you, for everybody out there listening to the show. Welcome into Stoppage Time. It is episode number 109 of our favorite show. Before we get into it, it's a rapid recap today, John Bucketheimer. Um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Producer Matty, he's kind of fucking up a little bit when we start our shows. Have you noticed that? I have noticed that. It seems like it's been four or five times in a row now. It's consistently messing up. All of a sudden, his New York Jets start playing well. All of a sudden, he comes in drunk to work the next morning. <laughs> Just going to say there's a little bit of a link to what's going on with our show. Welcome in, everybody. It is, of course, our show, Stoppage Time, episode number 109. Huge shout out to our partners, Points Bet, for everything they do. It is a Fanatics Experience Buckets. Take yeah, big shout out to the boys over there at Points Bet, the Fanatics Experience. And even though We've got people like Matt kind of slowing us down here, and we know that they have always have our back. Phenomenal work being done by everyone, and thank you for getting us this platform. Yeah, Matt certainly looking a lot like Aaron Rodgers after the injury, not before the injury, Ooh. you know, sort of slow, like creeping his way, not really doing much, you know, but episode 109 is a pretty good show, Buckets. We've got a great show in store for everybody out there. We're going to have a betting recap show with some news and some fun. We'll recap what happened, obviously, in the big game between the USA and Buckets' team, Germany. And Bucket will, of course, uh, provide the Tuesday twos for everybody out there. We can't wait to get into that because Buckets is on quite the fucking roll. And speaking of good roles, John Buckets, i you had a phenomenal fucking weekend. You almost went 6-0. and all. Congratulations. I'm going to hand over the microphone to you to take it from bet to bet to bet to bet to bet. And then the last motherfucker that escaped us. We were so close to the sweep. And I hate that it was the bonkers bet that lost it for us. But as you all know, we did two bets. Two on Friday, two on Saturday, and two on Sunday. Is that what it was? Yeah, yep. yeah, six bets total. We ended up going five and one, so a quick breakdown of game per game here. Started in the Euro qualifiers between Netherlands and France. We had France to score in the first half at minus 105. One of the easiest bets we've hit in a very long time. Killing Mbappe, he took care of us within the first 15 minutes. No sweat. Second match was Austria versus Belgium. A little bit more of a sweat, but ultimately, as long as you get that one goal apiece, it doesn't matter what time they come, whether that's in the first 10 minutes or the last 10 there. Austria, Austria helping us out big time there. Then on Saturday, I was on that friendly between USA and Germany. I was on both teams to score and over two and a half, Ian. And I told everybody, I have no idea who's going to win this game, but both managers are going to play very open and very aggressive soccer. And that is exactly what we saw in that matchup where Germany did win three to one to cash that one. Then Ian's least favorite bet of the weekend, Northern Ireland versus San Marino. I was on under four and a half goals, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to any of you. We got lucky on this one. Northern Ireland probably should have gone over four and a half in the first half. Plenty of chances to score in this game, but 2-0 at halftime, it starts pouring. The pitch is wet. Nobody knows what's going on. Another good cash for us there to sweep Saturday. Men's Sunday, we started with Burjos versus Villarreal CFB in La Liga 2 Segunda Division. Both teams to score. That game was 0-0 in the 50th minute and ended 3-2, so no problem for the BTTS, and always good to see that aggressive second half. So 5-0 Going into the very last bonkers bet of the weekend, I was on SD, Ibar, Ebar, it doesn't matter because they let us down, versus CD, Huesca. I was on Ibar to win the game in over two and a half goals. It was 1-1 one, one in the 75th minute, but Ibar just could not put that to bed. But 5-1, and one, Ian, you will never see me complain about a weekend like that. Dude, it's absolutely insane. We were riding it with you. And of course, that last game, we were so desperate to get that sweep because you have been on a hell of a run. Where are you exactly over the last 20 picks? Because it's been a pretty goddamn good ride for you so far. It's been a great run. And I want everyone to remember that last week, we had a day in which I went 0-4. So I did have an 0-4 reverse sweep. And even with that 0-4, we are 13-7 and on our last 20 picks here, Ian. Uh, all you got to do is just bounce back. It's like we always say. 
Yeah, but midweek has been pretty special for you. Um, once again, we head towards the Tuesday twos, which has been really successful for you. Explain where you are in the midweek picks. And I know you had that own four, which is the reverse sweep for everybody out there who doesn't know what Buckus is talking about own four, uh, meaning you go reverse in the direction you really want to go in. Um, but Buckets has been doing so fucking well. That was just a minor blip in the road. So where exactly are you with midweek picks ahead of this Tuesday two session? Ahead of this Tuesday two session, looking at past Tuesday twos, Wednesday twos, Thursday, Friday fours, whatever the hell we call them. Eight, or sorry, seven of the last eight midweek fixtures here on Stoppage Time with me, Ian, have been profitable. So seven out of eight is not bad at all. The one time, obviously, was that time we did hit the 0-4, but something about these midweek smaller matches, Ian, there's just so much value to be had in these matches. Why do you think that is, Buck? It's just a curiosity. I think that there's so much eyes and there's so many people that want to bet on the big games they want to bet on the manchester cities and all the the crazy big leagues that sometimes the lines on points bet do seem a little bit softer for some of these smaller leagues not as many people want to bet on teams like levante or levant or ibar or huesca whatever it may be so sometimes we're able to find some sneaky value there that maybe goes under the radar for some people either that or um producer matt's been doing the picking recently for points bet on the system you know i didn't want to throw him under the the bus you know but Rumor has it that might be happening. <laughs> Let's get into the loyal listener comments buckets. We got a hell of a bunch of comments here. I'm going to fire through them rapidly. We go to Brian K5840. Once buckets move to New York, can we get a crossbar challenge between Ian and buckets on the show? Or X, whatever the fuck it's called. The amateur versus the X pro. I would love to see that. And then buckets, you jumped in there and said, not to brag, but I'm 99% sure I could take Ian in that. So explain yourself first and foremost, why you think you could beat me at the crossbar challenge. Well, here's my logic. First of all, I had to Google what a crossbar challenge was. And after I figured that part out, Ian, you're a defender, right? You're not shooting goals. You're busy picking up yellow cards in your own third there. So I figured probably not the best foot on Ian. I'm not trying to challenge him in any physical matchups here, but I think I could probably snag a, a win off that one. Let me reverse it on you here. For offensive players, their challenge is to miss the bar and get it under the bar into the net. For us, all, a defensive players, our objective with the ball is to make sure we hit our target every single time. So whether it's a midfielder or a striker or into the corner, we have a specific area that we pass the ball to. So you will find that midfielders and defenders are the best passers of the ball. Uh, put that in your fucking pipe and smoke it buckets. <laughs> Let's go to a great message that we received from AH Cardinal 19. I love this show and definitely have been a loyal listener for months, but I usually say nothing, but this show is too good. I need to speak up. Keep up the great picks and great energy. Y'all make my day. Fun fact, I actually also played in MLS. And in brackets, he said, more like I was on the bench with a smiley emoji. He went on to add, I am also currently living in Germany and my wife is German. And as an American, I will also be rooting for Germany when they play Let's the USA go. in Connecticut. Thank you, Buckets, because I thought I was the only American <laughs> who would be rooting for Germany. I will also be enjoying my German beer during this game too. Prost, my brother, and Alf Gates, Deutschland. Buckets, that is a great message from AH Cardinal 19. I tried to Google to see who the fuck that is. So please, if you're <laughs> listening to the show, let us know your name so we can at least figure out who you are and you played in major league soccer i want to know when and where and so we can at least give you some love on the show we thank you for your wonderful comment buckets that was awesome message that was awesome maybe he played for new york red bulls though and that's why he's not telling us where he played he doesn't want to piss you off antagonize you do anything like that but no that's the stuff we love to see you don't have to comment every episode ian might say you need to you probably should not to piss ian off but i love the fact that we have people that are always watching no matter what even if they're just there to consume content even if they're just there to hang out with us every single day we do a show. And also, cross to you as well. I am glad to find another American rooting for our German brothers there. Whatever. Let's move on. (laughs) Michael Torres, 3081. Great show, guys. Have a great weekend. Oscar uh, M. Barcello jumping in and said, I put under three and a half at plus 138 on the Northern Ireland against San Marino game. I thought I was done early. He got very lucky, Bucky. And then we got back in here with A.D. Purnomo, 6240, hope I've pronounced that correctly. Indonesia is on the Asian continent, John, not mm-hmm. far away from Japan. Someday you should come here. We have a beautiful island called Bali. By the way, I always trust in both of you. Buckets, great message from once again our awesome fan. And but how about this one here? Message from Irish John 4984. I love it, you crazy FKS. 
Now, that either means you crazy fucks, which I appreciate. We love you too. Or that's a shout out to producer Rob right there. Love it, you crazy freaks buckets. Uh, yeah, I was thinking FCK. I was like, oh, he's a Kaiser Slaughter fan. Okay, I get what he's doing here. I love that. I'm going to guess he's shouting out freaks there because I don't think enough people personally are in Rob's DMs yet. So I think that was just another nod saying, hey, reach out to Rob. Let him know your feelings. Yeah, no doubt about it. Jump in at producer Rob's DMs if you can. We we tag him all the time, so feel free to jump in his D- DMs. Uh, we go to Twitter. Buckets, you got me paid, y'all, at John Buckets. And then you replied to Trav and said, let's go. And then he added, I've been a listener and a follower. I've got BTTS and over two and a half goals and over three and a half goals with plus money. Buckets, Trav jumping in and showing you some love on X. I'm gl- oh, X. We're officially calling it X now. We know no more I Twitter. Fa- it's- I, I, honestly, fucking social media. Trav, thank you for reaching out on social media. Trav is not a first-time commenter. He's the kind of guy that has been following us now for a while. And he's one of the people I love so much because Trav makes his own damn bets. We say, hey, we like the under here. And he goes, okay, I hear you loud and clear. 2 nil exact score, 3 nil exact score. There you go, Bucket. So sometimes it's a little bit crazy, but you love to see it. Josh Catero. 13. He said, Buckets is absolutely amazing. Just listening to all the excellent information you and Ian spout at us makes amazing, really amazing bets and wins like these. Seriously, who the fuck calls the exact score like he does? Buckets, you <laughs> actually predicted the correct score. You said the over. I also said over two and a half, which hit. Um, but you, did you predict the exact score in this game? I tweeted out score prediction 3 1 Germany victory. And I saw a lot of people after the game was over tweet their winning tickets at plus 1200 saying, of course you hit that bucket. It's like, I was right there with you. I didn't bet correct score myself, but again, taking the information, Ian. Just uh, another word of advice for everybody out there. Don't just necessarily listen to our show stoppage time. Go follow us on social media and also follow John Buckets. I'm our Buckets, John Betts, and myself at Joy Paul. Ian Buckets is getting closer to the follows. He's very excited to overtake me <laughs> with the followers. Um, but he's also putting out there just random what he feel bets and looks. He does it for free, including our show stoppage time with our great partners points bet make sure you're falling across the board um let's get into youtube i think it was this one was what a weekend tailed all your bets also had like four over two and a half first halves and over three and a half first halves come through as well that was from cd9891 then we had string q4 said buckets good run a lot of love and then i jumped into the apple podcast format once again we got a new comment in there for everybody out there please go jump in the comments and leave one at six stars not just five stars no 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 for king otis 1771 incredible show must listen the people have spoken give us more shows buckets your thoughts on that i think he's spot on you know how long have we been telling rob we need 12 shows a week here ian right I mean, producer Rob, sometimes sleeping at the wheel, you know, three, he's like, yeah, that'll satisfy all those freaks, according to producer Rob. Um, But our loyal listeners, they demand more, they want more. And if me and you buckets had more time, we'd give them more. So let's hopefully in the near future, no, just kidding. We will, of course, try to bring you more and more shows as we go along. But three right now is working out perfectly for myself and buckets and also the production team and points bet. So we're happy with where we are right now. But as things go down the line, of course, we're going to try and bring you more and more. We won't just necessarily bring you shows. We'll also be bringing you content. We have some great ideas where we can get really creative watch this space buckets let's discuss what happened between usa and germany it was of course a friendly game taking place in hartford connecticut usa won germany three was the result christian Pulisic scored 27 minutes into the game assisted by florian or fuller and balligan ilkay gundogan 39 minutes into the game made it 1-1 at halftime before nicholas fulkrug scored to make it 2-1 58 minutes into the game assisted by robin gurens gusens robert gusens whatever his fucking name is jamal musiala and 61 minutes made it 3-1 assisted by full crew we have a couple of stats coming out of that game Julian Nagelsmann who made his debut on the bench for the German national team is the second manager of Germany to win his first match after trailing in that game the other one was Otto Nertz back in 1926 the same year that producer Jay was born Nicholas Fulkrug has scored eight goals in his first 10 international matches for the German national team and in the last 45 years only one player has scored as many or more goals in their first 10 international players Buckets take a guess which player that was is it Jared Mueller 
Serge Gnabry scored nine goals really? in his first 10 international games. Christian Pulisic scored his 27th national team goal for the US national team. And what a fucking goal it was. 63 games it took him to score 27 goals. That's an amazing record he has. And Germany has scored at least three goals against the US men's national team on American soil for the fourth time. Only Mexico has scored more often on US soil. So buckets overall, when you look at this game, what was your impression? Overall, I was just happy to see Germany not lose uh, because it's been a while and they've been looking pretty poor lately. I think my favorite thing I got out of this entire matchup was getting the chance to watch Jamal Musiala and Florian Wirtz play side by side. They looked like a dynamic duo. They were really fun to watch the midfield there. I know that there's some rumors about Florian Wirtz potentially coming to Bayern Munich here when his contract is up with Leverkusen. And that made me excited to see the potential there pending Musiala staying. I will also say that the USA, even though they did lose 3-1, Polisic looked good. He looked happy and he looks like he's playing well. That was a beautiful shot he had to open up the scoring there. But ultimately, I think both teams need to look at this as a victory in a sense. You know, there's a lot to build off of for both of these squads. This was a very open game, which we don't usually see from Beralter. I think it's important to get out of your comfort zone when you have attacking players like Polisic, Balogun, and Wea up front. You've got to adjust your play style. And I do think the USA did do a good job starting to do that. A long way to go still, but overall, I was happy with both teams. Many people out there, including all the social media experts who are really not social media experts, they jumped in and criticized Greg Berhalter for the fact that they lost against Germany and a lot of media experts out there. And I will say this, the soccer media fucking annoying me at the moment, um, basically saying that this Germany team is not all that. I mean, anyone who's commenting on this Germany team, I'm going to go through the starting 11 buckets. Ter Stegen in goal, Ta at right back, Hummels, Rudiger and Gusens. Four world-class players. I don't care what anyone says. Yep. Then in midfield, Musiala, Pascal Gross, Gundogan, and Florian Wirtz. Three of them are absolutely world-class. Then you've got Sané and Fulkrug up top. You cannot criticize the starting 11 that Germany had against our US boys. That was a good fucking sight. They were dangerous. They were dynamic. They clearly had more possession of the ball. They absolutely wanted to create more chances, which they did do. In the first half, they had 11 shots and three of them on target. And the US only had four shots with three of them on target. My biggest disappointment from the US boys against this Germany team, forgetting all the criticism that people have put out there, is the fact that the US dropped a gear in the second half. They sat back, they invited pressure, and in the second half, they only had two shots, none of them on on target against Germany who had eight shots and four of them on target in that second period and against world-class sides like Germany forgetting the fact that they've only won four of the last 17 games and Julian Nagelsmann is the new boss in charge of them it was still a game that you could have learned from and I felt like the USA gave up 45 minutes where they should have just pushed and been more aggressive and had more self-confidence to really challenge this German team so I was really disappointed with that second half performance and hopefully they can improve with that game against Ghana which will be a fantastic watch which I'm really looking forward to Buckets at the 23 man US men's national team squad for the game against Germany uh, last Saturday it had a combined for more direct goal contributions in the Bundesliga, 70, which is 34 goals, 36 assists. Then in the domestic league, Major League Soccer, 63 goals, 35 goals, and 28 assists. Meaning that there's more success in the U.S. national team from players who have competed in the Bundesliga than there is even in, in Major League Soccer, which tells you that this U.S. team is a very international squad, but it also tells you that the Bundesliga is helping develop our young, talented players. It absolutely is helping develop not only our players, but players all over the world. I mean, let's not forget that Pulisic was in Germany for a while. He played for Borussia Dortmund. He had a lot of success at Dortmund, as we see with a lot of these American players. And I think that it's very important for these U.S. players to continue to get experience outside of the U.S., to play in the Bundesliga or the Premier League or La Liga, wherever it may be. You've got to get that international experience because the play style is just going to differ so wildly when you play teams like Germany who are so attack heavy and do have such incredible depth in their roster. I mean, look at the halftime changes. Havertz, Goretzka, Brandt, Mueller, Sule, and Fulrich all come on. Those are world-class players that you have to deal with in the second half, and you can't slow down, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah, I agree with you. Let me just real quickly go through the U.S. national team starting 11 because I got very excited, maybe a little too excited when I saw the way they started this game. Uh, Turner in goal, Scali at right back, Richards Ream uh, in center back position, Dest at left back. Reyna was back, Gio Reyna and the Greg Berhalter thing seems to be over, which is great. Musa played in the center of midfield alongside Weston McKinney, who played very well. Um, Wea played on the right-hand side, Balogun up top and Pulisic sort of floated around, but he started on that left-hand side. This starting 11 outside maybe Tyler Adams, it's fucking phenomenal. And the way they played, even though it was counter-attacking football in the first 45 minutes, gives me reason to be very excited. Following Balogun, or Flo Balogun, how he likes to go, just needs to be a bit patient. 
He just needs to wait for the opportunities. Now, I will say this, though. Greg needs to find a way for his team to create for Balogun because he's the fucking goal scorer. Christian was a bit selfish in that first half. We got a goal because of that selfishness, and it was a world-class goal. And he's continuing his fine form, obviously, with what he's doing with AC Milan. But Balogun just needs to be a bit patient. I saw the frustration out there and the way he was communicating with his teammates, throwing his arms, a little frustrated, didn't want to come off. Just be a bit more patient, and this team will gel around Balogun. I know it's Christian's team. And I know we've got world-class players like Gio who makes a big fucking difference when he's not there. You realize it. But I think Balogun is the difference between us being a really good side and just a good side. The starting 11 was awesome. And uh, some of the changes worried me in the second half how far we dropped in quality. So be very careful how we progress. And I'm excited to see how this team performs against Ghana who were um, not very good against Mexico in their game. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Mexico won that game by two goals. Now, Buckets, it would not be a show of stoppage time without getting the Tuesday twos from you, John Bucketsheimer. A couple of bets is exactly what we're needing, especially when you're in the form that you're in. Let me remind everybody, Buckets was 5-1 and one this past weekend. You made a shit ton of profit from him. Oh, forgetting the fact that he was 0-4 going into that fucking weekend. <laughs> but congratulations to Buckets. Hey, this Tuesday, we've got Euro 24 qualifiers. We've got FA Cup qualification process. We've got CONCACAF Nations League. We also have Commonwealth World Cup qualifiers as well. But Buckets, you have a full slate of games elsewhere. If you decide to jump into the Tuesday twos and take us there, I'm okay with that. Give me best bet number one, please. I'm glad you pronounced Commonwealth because I was not sure how to say that. But I do have a pick for one of those games anyway. I'm looking at that matchup, Ian, between Uruguay and Brazil. And I am extremely excited for this matchup because you have two really strong teams coming off of two poor results. Brazil is a team that Ian and I had mentioned previously were a perfect team in this competition so far. And they drew 1-1 to Venezuela, which was, frankly, an embarrassing outcome in that matchup. Meanwhile, we saw Uruguay draw 2-2 to Colombia in a very close, hard-fought match, but they did play a man up the end there. Two matches that could have been wins, but both ended in draws, which means both teams will look for that immediate bounce back. When I'm looking at this matchup, a lot of people, points bet, not blaming you, don't see goals in this matchup, Ian. Over two and a half goals is plus odds. And my favorite bet, BTTS, is minus 110, which I think is ridiculous. I am hammering that both teams to score in this matchup at minus 110 because I'm looking at a Uruguay squad that has the likes of an in-form, healthy, fit Darwin Nunez. We've seen his success at Liverpool. We know how well he can play. And I'm looking at a Brazil squad that has more impressive attackers that I have time to name right now. Two amazing attacking squads battling it out. And last little tidbit here, both teams to score has hit in seven of the last eight matches for Brazil across all competitions. Brazil will have no trouble scoring here, and they're not playing defense enough or defensive enough to stop a team like Uruguayan. Uh oh. Fucking love this bet. Love it with a passion. <laughs> John Buckingham, this is a fucking fantastic bet, and I'm just going to tell you why. Because Brazil and obviously Uruguay scoring goals. Brazil have scored seven, Uruguay have scored six. It is second against fourth in the standings right now. It's a long process through World Cup qualification. Um, but I just want to let you know the next three games for Brazil through this qualification process. This last one in this window is obviously against Uruguay or Uruguay, whichever way you want to fucking pronounce it. Then when we go to the November international window, they have two massive games. One against Colombia, which I believe is in Colombia. And then they are are at home buckets on November 21 against Argentina. Argentina. Mm -hmm. So Brazil need fucking goals. And because they're away from home, I love this bet. I love this bet. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, Neymar after the 1-1 game against Venezuela where they conceded four minutes before the end of the game and completely fucked my money line bet, Neymar had popcorn thrown at him by his own fans. Did you see that? I did see that. I did not know it was his own fans though. Really? Yeah. Own fans threw popcorn at him and he fucking lost his shit. His players protected Good. him and got him the fuck out of there. So love that bet. Hope everybody tells it because I feel like that's an absolute winner. Cannot believe that you got minus 110 on points bet, by the way. Absolutely insane line. Let's get to your second bet. Well, I'm glad you love that first one so much because I have a feeling you're not going to love the second one, Ian, because I'm going back to one of my favorite teams in the Euro qualif qualifiers, San Marino, as they're hosting Denmark. Last time, I was on under three and a half goals. We probably should have seen eight, but we still cashed that ticket. Now we've got San Marino taking on Denmark. Denmark is tied with 16 points at the top of the group with Slovenia. They've scored 15 out of seven. Meanwhile, San Marino have scored, oh, that's right, zero out of seven and have conceded 24 goals. Now, when I'm looking at this matchup, of course, Denmark is going to win. And Denmark will probably score two goals within the first 10 minutes. But what I'm betting on is what's going to happen after that. Denmark will win this game, no problem. But their next, next match is against Slovenia. 
against the team that they're tied with at the top of the table, which means Denmark needs to focus on that match ahead rather than focus on San Marino, who is basically just here for fun at this point in this match. My bet, Ian, is not going to be the under this time, but is San Marino plus four and a half goals on the spread, which is minus 110 on points bet. That seems like a ridiculous amount of goals, and frankly it is, but look at San Marino. In their last 15 matches across all competitions, they've only ever lost by five or more goals twice. Once to, I believe it was Switzerland, and then once to England. England beat them 10-0 back in 2022, but this is a team that are the absolute masters of losing 2-0, 3-0, or 4-0. I do not think Denmark will pump in five goals. I see them going up early, resting players, and prepping for Slovenia, while San Marino at home will be happy in front of their fans not to lose by five here again. John Bucket Timer, John Bucket Timer. Uh-oh. Hi, Buckets. My name is, uh, you're fucking losing your mind here, Buckets. Don't get carried away. Listen, I understand it where everybody picks on San Marino and you just love the San Marino story. You do understand that the fucking goalkeepers, the postman, the left backs, the bus driver <laughs> who takes all the kids to the school and then the center forwards, the plumber and then the guy who plays in midfielder, he's the guy who fixes your swimming pool. These are part-time players. Who knows what's going to happen in these fucking goddamn games? Anything could happen here. Um, I, Listen, I'm going to tell you because you're on such a hot streak right now and everybody out there our loyal listeners should do the same but i love it it's a, an interesting bet it's something different i appreciate it but i did hear a rumor that you changed this bet at the last minute what was it previously and why did you change so previously it was under four and a half goals at plus 100 yeah and that's why i changed it because out of respect to you i know what unders do to your heart i know that you're still you know recovering i want to look out for you i'm not going to give you two unders back to back plus that was only plus 100 Plus four and a half goals on the spread means that this can still end four nil play that close and a slightly safer line. And if, you know, God forbid San Marino scores here, this bet's looking even better, Ian. Love it, John Bucket Timer. That's episode number 109 of our wonderful show, Stoppage Time, with our great partners, Points Bet. Thank you to everybody, the loyal listeners out there, for what you do for our show. Without you, this show is not the same. Without you, we are certainly not on the platform that we're in right now. And a huge shout out to Points Bet for giving us this awesome platform where we can say what we want, how we want to say it, and provide winners like we have done over the last, I don't know, one year, John Bucket Timer. A lot of people are out there asking in the comments, social media, I'm sure you've seen the posts as well, where people are coming at it and saying, post your winners, post your losers, post the picks. Where are you? Let us know where you are. Go back and listen to every fucking show. I can guarantee you we're way up and profitable. Nobody's <laughs> doing it in the business like us. And Buckets, I can guarantee you that nobody does it like you, man. And I posted it this weekend on my social media, at Joy Polly, and please go follow because Buckets is catching me very closely. Um nobody's doing it like you. And I posted that because I want people out there to know and recognize that you are not just the entertainer that you are. And my co-host of the show stoppage time brought you, brought to you with our partners points, but thank you for all that you do. And, um, but buckets, you are fucking very good at what you do. You take time into consideration and you make sure that you are thorough before you even provide a bet. And a lot of those bets you are giving out for free. So congratulations for the great run that you're on, but I also want to give you credit for the hard work that you do for our loyal listeners out there, man. Well, I appreciate that, man. I take a lot of pride in the work that I do, and and every single pick that I give out is always one that I truly believe will hit. I'm not tossing any half-ass, like, oh, I need a pick here. Uh, yeah, sure, San Marino. Like, every pick I give out on the show, and I know you do the same thing, we put a lot of time and effort into. So when it doesn't hit, I'm always frustrated just because that's a bet that I really, really believed in, Ian. But no matter what happens, whether we're 0-4 one day or 5-0 and the next, I'm going to stick to my process because this is a process that I've spent years developing finding the best way to get the best bets for all of us. All right, enough of the soppy shit because producer Jay is squirming around in his fucking chair Uh, once again. Back again on Tuesday, everybody. I'll be in the studio with the Points Bet family as we get you set up for the latest news. We will also break down what is happening off the field as well. There's some crazy news recently, which I'm excited to share with everybody out there. Um, We will also be building up to the Bundesliga and club football, which returns, of course, on Friday. There's some great games to look forward this weekend. Don't forget, everybody out there, Points Bet, we got you covered. Uh, Download the app bet with points bet jump on the website wherever you are in this world make sure you're tailing us on social media as well stoppage time is out there available to you on social media buckets john bets out there available to you on social media myself at joy polian make sure you're following us across the board because we're trying to change the game and it doesn't happen with you out there thank you so much to everybody for liking for sharing for listening for watching our show stoppage time it would not be the same without you please make sure you subscribe please make sure you share the show 
show as much as you possibly can because we want to continue to grow. Have a great night, everybody. Make sure you like you uh, just witnessed John Bucket's I'm Our Dead this weekend. Make sure you absolutely have it. Thank you.